User flows help everyone understand in the development team what screens lead to what. So what happens when you click this button? What happens when you click that image? What happens in general in this app, in this website, right? In this video, I'm gonna go over Zeppelin Flows, their new product, and show you guys a little bit about how it works, how it can help you guys in your process or your company. And I'm gonna start with a real life example. Now, before we get started here, this is Zeppelin. And right now I'm working with the beta of the flow program, right? So the first thing you see when you get into Zeppelin is this screen here. This is your workspace and these are your projects per workspace, right? I covered this in one of my previous videos, so I'm not gonna go too much into detail about Zeppelin and about all the screens and, and all the features, but you guys can watch that Zeppelin video right up there if you haven't already. Now, before we get started here into Zeppelin, let's go ahead and check out Figma first and see what we're working with. This is a mock-up or almost like a demo of an app. And what we're gonna do here is connect these screens to Zeppelin so that we can start building our flows. Now, before we get started with the flows themselves, let me show you guys a little bit about what the problem is and why Zeppelin flows is so genius in the first place. So over here, if we start out with the kind of bigger picture here, each one of these lines horizontally is essentially a flow, right? This is a task flow, this is an email flow, and this is another flow, right? So let's start with the first one over here. If I wanted to showcase how a user can go from creating a task to selecting one to then getting this modal pop up here, how would I do that in Figma without any plugin, right? Or without any other software? Well, to be honest, to do it, it would be a little bit difficult. I'd maybe go over to the pen tool or the line tool, actually. I'd select maybe I wanted to go from this page over to this page and then I need to select it. And then I, I'm having trouble because it actually went into a frame. So I try to do it outside the frame. I need to bump up the stroke, copy paste that into maybe here. I do shift H so it flips, right? Then now I need to kind of drag that to be where I want it. Maybe it goes to here instead. Perfect, right? Super easy, guys. Obviously not, definitely not. Not the easiest way this could be done. And so that is kind of the idea of user flows in Zeppelin. They're trying to solve this problem here, trying to eliminate this whole kind of problem where it's not easy to showcase how one user goes from one button or one click to the next slide or to the next page and showcasing different swipes, different clicks, different whatevers. So what we're gonna do here is import these screens that we have here into Zeppelin. And we'll do that just by selecting these three images or these three screens, go over and into the plugin, click on Zeppelin, and you will then export it onto your project. Now I've already done that, so I'm not gonna go ahead and do that now. So let's go over ahead into Zeppelin beta and I'll show you guys exactly how this works. So we've got two different projects here, right? We've got web and iOS, we'll go ahead and click into iOS and we'll see that we have already imported these screens into each different flow, right? So we've got to create a task flow, we've got the create email one, we've got sign in and sign up. Those are obviously, this, these can be variants. And so what we're gonna do now is create our very first flow. So let's go ahead and see how that works. So I've already done this for the first one and we can see that over here with this new icon, with this new button. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the button, view and flow. And this is the first thing that we're gonna see here. On our screen, we see these arrows or these kind of flow lines that explain to us exactly how one screen is supposed to be attached to the next or how they're all kind of convoluted. And if we delete this label right here, we'll see exactly how easy it is to create Create these flows. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete these lines here and we'll start out with our very first flow. So let's go ahead and say I wanted to click on this checkbox and showcase that by clicking that we'll go on to this page which then shows a few active clicks. So to do that we have to go ahead and click on the checkbox that we want. I'll just make sure I click on the right one. I'll go ahead and drag that to the page that I want, something like this. And then that shows that this element is being clicked and that then takes us to the page. Now, if I wanted to, I can add text here, so I can say, click takes you to active checkbox, and I can reduce this a little bit. So this kind of explains to the devs exactly what screen is supposed to go where. Now, if I wanted to go ahead and just say, okay, after you do that, you have to create a task, okay? Well, then let's go ahead and do that. I can also, instead of going directly to the button, I can go to a different part of the screen and just say, okay, when you click on this, it'll take you to the next screen. Okay, just like that. Now, this is a pretty basic flow. It works, this is pretty self-explanatory, but let's say we have something a lot more complicated. Let's say we've got maybe five different sheets or screens, whatever you wanna call them, Let's say that we need a showcase going backwards, going forwards, maybe there's an error. Let's, let's see how we would do that. So again, we would have to go again into Figma, export all of these screens, and go directly into our dashboard. So here we're gonna test out a create an email flow and see exactly how we can do that. So I've already created this flow, but I'm gonna delete everything again and we can start from zero. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the icon view and flow and we can see what I've done here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and delete all of these flows so that we can start from zero and show you guys exactly how easy it is to build 
build it. Okay, so what I've done here is I've imported all of our screens into the flow and I've separated it by two different flows. So we've got our default here, our default state, and then depending on what you do with one state or the other, it'll take you to one view or another. Now, if you notice here in this screen right here, this is actually a variant. Now, what a variant is, is exactly what it sounds like. It's a variant of the same exact screen. So a really easy example for you to understand would be light mode and dark mode, right? Or clicked and unclicked. So if we want to, we can have two different versions of the flow here one of them would be with the click and another one would be without the click so if I wanted to I could set this one to be without the click we can see that here or let's say maybe for the for this example we do want the click now another thing that you could do with these variants is actually just duplicate this so you've got another copy one of them would be the clicked version and another one would be without the click right so you can show the two different flows what happens if the person hasn't clicked on this and they try to create an email well it'll prompt them to sign up first it'll prompt them to do this first or whatever it is right but if they actually have click this and they have signed up and all that, then what would that look like? Okay, so for this example, we're just gonna use the version with the select so we can see exactly how that would work. Okay, so to start, let's say that we wanna create, just create an email, right? Just create this flow. And before we get into that, I wanna showcase that just by double clicking it, we can actually go directly into the edit mode or to the standard Zeppelin mode that allows people to see all the components, see how far away they are from things, the, the points and all that. And also we see that this is a variant, so we can go back and forth between those two states. Now let's go back into the, to the flow so we can actually build this into a flow. So let's say we click the create email button here. We wanna drag this out into the screen right here and we wanna showcase that that is what happens when you click on that button. Now we can go ahead and change this color here into black, into green, into yellow, or into red. All have different purposes, all have different reasons. And we also can change the state of the line. So maybe it's a dotted line and maybe the line doesn't have an arrow but it just has a dot. So we can see what that would look like there. But for this case, I want it to be an arrow and I want it to be maybe black. So we can go ahead and do that. Okay, so once we click create email, it takes it to this screen right here. But what happens if I then wanna click browse and I wanna go and actually change it to an image, to a video, to one of these elements here, right? Well, then I can go ahead and click on this exact element into browse, click that, and then just drag it into the page that we want. Okay, sounds good. But what happens, maybe we wanna showcase an error, right? We wanna showcase a screen that doesn't necessarily work. Okay, so let's say that maybe we wanna click out of this mode and go back into the, the previous page, right into right here. Let's say we wanna go ahead and do that. So say that maybe we wanna click somewhere, well then we wanna showcase that you can't actually do that unless you've clicked one of the components first. Well then we can go ahead and change this screen or this color to be red. And maybe we can say that it is now dotted so people can see that this is actually a red mode or an error mode. So your developer knows that, okay, this is what happens in the wrong mode or in the wrong state. Okay, so that's how error modes work or, or error states, whatever you wanna call them. But what happens if you actually wanna successfully go back and showcase that you can actually click outside here and go back to the previous page. Well, it's very easy to do that. You just go ahead and drag it backwards to your previous page and then you can then change the color to something that makes sense to you and your developers. So say that maybe that is the green color and instead of the dots, I mean, instead of the arrow, we use the dot and then we use the dotted line. So we can see, okay, this is what happens on a successful one and this is what happens on a bad one or in an error one. Simple enough. Now let me go ahead and mock up this other page here. So let's say that we wanna showcase what happens when you click on this first and we want it to go exactly to this page right here. Again, we can change this just to be our simple black color with the arrow, sounds good. And then we want this page, instead of just the regular page, we want it to go to send again. And send again prompts you to go to the recipients page and that is what that would look like. Okay, it sounds good. We have all of our flows plotted, but there's something missing here and that would be text, right? Text is extremely important when you're, when you're outlining flows and we can go ahead and add labels right here. So as we saw with the previous one, we can see that we can add text, we can add labels, and that's simple enough just like this, right? We can just double click on it and we can add text just like that. So let's go ahead and do that for this flow here. So we can go ahead and add text here and we can say that, okay, when we click create email button, what does it take you to? It takes you to the create the email page, right? So it takes you to create page. And then maybe you wanna explain something to your devs, right? Like should only be accessible if the person has actual access to it. Maybe they didn't sign up or didn't sign in. So we have to make sure that they have to sign up first. Okay, so should sign in first. 
and maybe this part is a little bit obvious, okay? So maybe we wanna just delete that, just like that. That's how easy that is. We can reduce this size here so we can kind of fit it into a more narrow flow. That's totally fine as well. Or we can actually elongate it to be as long as your line is, and that's also fine. Now, if you want to add text without attaching it to any flow whatsoever, we can also just click add label, and we get this prompt here, which allows us to add text to wherever we want. So maybe we want to say that, okay, this flow up here is the create email flow. So that's the create email flow. And then when people zoom out and go onto it for the first time, they can say that, okay, this is the create the email flow. Let me go ahead and add another label here. This is the create task flow. And so now people can see exactly what these tasks are, what these flows are, and it's extremely easy for any dev or anyone in your company to understand what the flows actually do and kind of where, where they're supposed to go in the first place, right? Now, the beauty of adding this flow system to Zeppelin is that you still have all your previous screens involved with your project. So you've got all the sign in, sign up, and I covered this again in, in one of my previous videos. So if you guys haven't checked out Zeppelin yet, I definitely guarantee it. They're an amazing, amazing product. And then we also have a style guide over here. So if we want to have the color palette, the style catalog, we've got spacings and layouts. We obviously haven't added that one yet, but we also have components. And we, before we leave here, I wanted to also highlight that the flows are separated by your dashboard or by the projects, right? So if I'm over here in the desktop project or the, the web project, and I don't want to kind of interfere the flows with the iOS or the Android project, well then it doesn't actually do that. You have to document the user journeys or the flows depending on the project that you're talking about, the one that you're designing, which is extremely helpful. That way you don't have 30,000 different flows on the same exact page or board or whatever you wanna call it. It's all separated by the individual screens. So just to cover before we leave here, we've got different flows in different colors. The benefit between this and Figma is the ease of use, the fact that everyone can use this if they don't know how to use Figma. Also a technical aspect is that it might be easier to go over images onto the backboard or the back screen than it would in Figma. Obviously in Figma you've got screens so it'll actually overlay on top which isn't ideal. If you guys have any questions about Zeppelin or the flows, please leave them down below and I'll make sure to answer absolutely all of them. Thank you guys so much for watching and if you guys want to check out the other Zeppelin video I talked about in this video, then go ahead and make sure you watch that one right here or here. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and I'll see you guys in the next one.